This is the new Anycubic Photon Mono M5S Pro, the newest resin printer from Anycubic. There's a lot to go over here, so let's run through how to get one. Until February 1st, this printer is on pre-sale for $479 US dollars. And along with that, you'll get two kilograms of high-speed resin. After February 1st, the pre-order price goes up to $499 US dollars until the end of February. Okay, let's get into the specs of this printer. It features a 10.1 inch monochrome masking LCD with a resolution of 13,312 by 5,120. The pixel size of this screen is 16.8 by 24.8 micron. To put that into perspective, a human hair is about 70 micron, so this is about a third the size of a human hair. The build area of this machine is 223.78 millimeters by 126.38 millimeters on the X and Y and 200 on the Z. The Z axis has two linear rails to keep the build plate rigid during printing. The printing vat holds 5.65 liters of resin and uses an ACF release film for faster printing. The build plate is nicely engraved for better first layer adhesion. They include a handful of tools with this machine, including a plastic squeegee for stirring your resin and removing any debris from the resin vat, a thumb drive with some instructions and the Photon Workshop software, a screen protector to be applied to the masking LCD, as well as some funnels, filters, gloves, and masks. It's been a while since I've done a resin video, so I had to run out and grab some supplies, and here's a pro tip for you. You can get everything you need to post-process your resin prints from a dollar store for less than 30 bucks, even the isopropyl alcohol. I love these cheap silicone mats they sell for under dog dishes. They make the perfect spill mat for working with resin. They say this printer has auto leveling. I just leveled the normal way by loosening all the screws on the build plate, placing the leveling card on the screen, homing the Z-axis, then retightening the four screws on the build plate. They advertise this machine as being able to print up to 105 millimeters per hour. This means even if you pack the build plate completely full, the longest it would take is about two hours. Of course, when it comes to fast printing, one of the main things is that your resin stays at the right viscosity. A thin, runny resin can quickly flood to the bottom of the resin vat after each layer is peeled away from the vat's film. One way to do this is to keep it warm. The optimal temperature for printing resin is 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's where this next new addition comes in. It's a two-in-one chamber heater and activated charcoal filter. It heats and circulates the air within the print chamber while also scrubbing some of the resin odors out. As a Canadian who hates the smell of resin, I usually put my resin printers in my garage or basement, and battling cold resin has been a huge issue for me. So this is a great addition and I'm excited to test it. That being said, I'm sure Anycubic will also sell this chamber heater separately, and it looks like it'll fit into most mid-sized resin printers. I'm going to forego the fancy time lapses this time around in favor of keeping my build area toasty warm, so let's get printing. First up, I printed a bunch of my Wild Rose Builds test cubes, scaling them all the way down to 7%. And take a look at this tiny test cube with all the details intact. Super cool to see how small you can print with these 14K screens. Of course, the full size one printed flawlessly. Next, I printed a few of these ghost dogwood leaves from Dave Makes Stuff. I probably should have manually placed supports only on the bottom edge of these as taking the supports off caused quite a few breaks on the fragile leaves. 
Either way, the detail here is pretty insane. I also printed a few of these articulated dragon models at half scale, but they broke really easily while I was trying to clean them. Next I found a really good model of the Butcher from Diablo 4. And this one I scaled up to 200%. It printed in about 20 parts and they all printed successfully. I even had the printer alert me when I wouldn't have enough resin to complete a print. Here's how he looks after partial assembly. There's so much detail on this guy, it's amazing. I'm gonna hold off on finishing this guy as I'd like to sand him and take my time with painting here. Aside from user error with the leaves and dragons, I didn't have a single print fail. This is by far my highest success rate for resin printing, and I'm pretty sure it's thanks to that little chamber heater keeping everything at optimal printing temperatures. And again, none of these prints took longer than two hours, which is incredible. I think Anycubic has made a really good user-friendly resin printer here, and I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. That's all for today. Special thanks to Anycubic for sending this machine over to take a look at. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to check it out or place a pre-order. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.